and a stock on this puppy. Like my, my pruning knife was barely big enough to make it across it. I got that sucker. These are Stropharia rugosa annulata, but pardon my Latin. Um, called the garden giant, that's what I'll call them. Um, these grew to this size in two days. It's like some of them have pro probably a, uh, maybe a one foot diameter at the biggest. Uh, Stamets, the, um, the guy who owns the company that I ordered them from, has, claims he's got, got them up to about two feet in diameter before. I don't know. So I use a bunch of different kinds of hardwood. These ones don't eat evergreen. So you can't go to like a, a landscaping place and get a bag of cedar mulch or a pine mulch. It needs to be hardwood. And so there's birch. You can see a lot of white birch in there. Maple, oak, primarily. And if you get them nice and thin, I think you get more surface area. And the mycelia, that's the, uh, the white sheets of stuff that the mushrooms grow up out of. It'll cover over the, um, the, the wood as it's, as it's growing. And so if you maximize surface area by getting nice thin strips, I think it kind of like, um, you know, it shoots pretty rapidly. If I grab a piece here, See, it's really like all stuck together, kind of sawdust, and the mycelium from the mushroom is kind of like holding all that stuff together. So it's a pretty strong mycelial growth for the uh, garden giant. I'm hoping to be able to make another patch off of this using a little cardboard like uh, uh, Stamets wrote about in Mycelium Running, which is where I kind of got the idea of ordering the, um, the mushroom kit from him. Um, I put this patch in in, um, oh, I think like April, and it's now just the start of September. Um, we had some good hard September, late August rains, and uh, just poof, it all came up in a couple days like this. So this was probably good for another two more summers, like 2013, 2014, and if I add wood chips and sawdust and kind of make a run, I think I can make the patch just kind of grow that way. It's supposed to go well with, um, like grains and grasses. So we're hoping to kind of make a corn patch here next year and have this grow in, help trap some of the moisture and the two will kind of live symbiotically together. Um, I'm, I'm excited to cut some to eat for, um, for dinner tonight. I got a friend in who's got a, uh, a dish he's planning to do. Um, you want to harvest them where the, um, when the edges are still down curved before they've curved up like this and the spore starts to really come flying out. They'll be a little more tender and at least that's what I've been told or read. See the in the name of them the rugosa annulata. I think stands for a really pronounced ring from the veil that. But as the mushroom opens up, there's a, a thin membrane here that kind of rolls down the stalk. All right, so there's one with a with a nice little ring hanging down. You see ones where they're where it's hanging down farther. They're really pretty. I think they're a nice looking mushroom. Um, I paid twenty five dollars for a. Um, Garden Giant kit from uh, before shipping. Uh, they're they're out of Washington and I'm in New Hampshire, so you know across the country. I don't know what it was like five dollars shipping or something. Um, this past time I've got two kits, so I really saturated it up so it would grow aggressively here in the fall, and I'm really happy to see that it has. Um, I I think like next year I'm hoping I'll get two or three flushes about like this. out the, the actual protein breakdown and all that you'd have to look it up online but most most mushrooms are in the neighborhood of 10 to 20 percent protein uh, when it's dried Ooh, look at that one look, look at that veil yeah, it's still in curve not that one's gonna be gorgeous that'd be great for grilling like soak it in the teriyaki sauce and... big old pile of flapjacks <laughs> ready to cut them Edges are still a little down curved. Wow, I love how it just lifts the, the wood right up out. And look at all that mycelium on the bottom of that. Ugh. It's a good patch. You, you can see the, um, 
in the gills here that the, the spore from this is really a dark black. I think if you get it at this stage where it's starting to release the spores, like any sauce you did with it would just turn like really black. It might be a bit too intense. Look at how just black my fingers get from this, from that spore. Um, for textiles, I use them to, to make old dyes and whatnot. What we get for results on dehydrated garden giants. I've got a book by a guy from Maine who, who talks about, you know, like, um, different kind of um, what do you call it preserve ways to preserve you can make a, a like a duck teal sauce I must be butchering the French um, a, no a duck cell sauce um, and then freeze that there's the dehydration and then grinding into a powder I, some of these little round ones will probably launch off and other ones are just going to be smaller versions I, I after you get your initial flush, there'll be another flush, but a lot of them will be smaller if they're like other mushroom kits, things that I've, um, I've tried. Alright, there's two pounds of mushrooms. So I'd say the whole basket's about three to four. About three to four pounds of mushrooms in this basket. you can eat. <laughs>